Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we'll do a couple of examples of integration by parts. First, the formula for integration by parts. The integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Our first example, we'll look at the integral of x times the cosine of 3x dx. So we'll choose u equals x and dv equals cosine of 3x dx. Then du will equal dx and v will equal, we have to integrate cosine of 3x, that's one third sine of 3x. So using the formula, this integral becomes uv is x times one third sine 3x, that's one third x sine 3x minus the integral of v du, the integral of v du is simply dx, so the integral of one third sine of 3x dx. And the whole point of this uh, procedure is to turn the integral given into a simpler one, and this one would be considered simpler because we no longer have the factor of x here in the front. Our choice u equals x caused that to disappear when we took the derivative. du became 1 dx. So that's the uh, motivation for our choice, u equals x. Its derivative is 1, so in the follow-up integral, the x has disappeared. So we have 1 third x sine 3x minus 1 third times the integral of the sine of 3x dx. That's 1 third x sine 3x minus 1 third times the integral of sine is negative cosine. So this is going to be negative 1 third cosine of 3x. And then plus the constant of integration. And cleaning this up, the coefficient will be 1 ninth. So the final answer is 1 third x sine of 3x plus 1 ninth times the cosine of 3x plus c. So now we'll look at another example. Let's make it similar, the integral of x times the natural log of x dx. If we proceed as in the last example, then u equals x, dv is equal to log x dx, then du is equal to dx, and v is equal to the integral of the log of x. So that's not one that we know readily off the top of our heads, and even if we did know it, I don't think that result would be uh, helpful here. So this is not going to be a uh, feasible approach. So let's try something else for you. Since we didn't know how to take the antiderivative of log x, let's try putting uh, log x over here so that we take the derivative of it. So u equals log x dv equals x dx. Now we can take the derivative of log x, it's 1 over x, and we can integrate x. So v is equal to x squared over 2. So at least we can complete this table. Unfortunately here, the power of x uh, has increased, but that's compensated for by the fact that the logarithm has disappeared. So using the formula, that integral is equal to uv, which is x squared over 2 log x, minus the integral of v du, uh, v is x squared over 2, times du is 1 over x dx. So the integral we have here is something that we can manage, because this is x squared times 1 over 2x 
x squared times 1 over 2x, and this simplifies to just x over 2. So this is just that integral will simply be the integral of x. I can take the 2 to the front, well, it's the 1 half here, and the integral of x, that's an easy integral. So the final answer is going to look like x squared over 2 log x minus the integral of x is x squared over 2, and there's a 2 there already, so 1 fourth x squared plus c. Again, the integral of x would be x squared over 2, and then the 2 in the denominator, we'll multiply that 2 in the denominator, and we'll get a 4 in the denominator. So x squared over 2 log x minus 1 fourth x squared plus c. So in this second example, uh, the setup was a little bit different. We chose u to be the logarithm and dv to be uh, x to the first power. And that's because we could take the derivative of the logarithm but not uh, the antiderivative of the logarithm. The first attempt where we chose u to be x and dv to be log x required that we anti-differentiate the logarithm and that left, us, uh, that left us at a place, that left us stuck, basically. Okay, so there's a brief look at integration by parts. Uh, I hope you found it helpful.